Philip Harrelson, and I'd like to welcome you back again to the Barnabas study. And uh, come come on a little bit more sober note than what I normally do. And uh, I think over the next several days, I'm going to spend some time talking about one of the, uh, I guess you'd say, one of the most tremendous men that I have ever uh, met in my life. Uh, his name was Brother John Harrell. And Brother Harold pastored in Bridge City for 43, 44 years. I'm not certain exactly how long, but well over 40 years that he served there in that local church. And uh, this past Thursday, uh, his daughter, John Itt, called me and uh, told me that Brother Harold was not doing well and had been sick for quite some time, which really uh, had been a little bit of a surprise to me because I had kind of kept up phone calls and I had not seen him in quite a quite some time but uh, we talked really regularly uh, on the phone and uh, never once did he let on I mean I knew there were a few times where that I could tell that he was not feeling the greatest but um, he had been having some physical health issues for quite some time now and uh, I'd talked to him in December right before the holidays took off and everybody everybody gets into the crazy rush of things and and so I did not talk to him much through the holidays and then I called him again uh, probably the first week in January or so and I will say looking back in in thinking about that I, I do know it was a very short uh, phone call norm can compared to the time that I normally would talk and I of course at the time really didn't give it much thought I just you know assumed that uh, he was busy or or whatever but uh, when John Ett called me last Thursday uh, and told me that he was not well, it really, um, you just start thinking that we're, we're, we're battle, we're always battling time. And then Friday night, uh, she called me and told me that he had passed on. And so his funeral is going to be on February uh, the uh, 12th, which will be next Monday and uh, it'll be there in Bridge City and I'm expecting there will be a tremendous crowd that will be there uh, to honor uh, Brother Harold and certainly his ministry uh, and his calling and I've written quite a, quite a few blog posts in the past my blog has been kind of cold for several years now and I really need to get that going back again and so I have uh, probably will will spend quite a bit of time in the in this year writing about some of the experiences that I had with Brother Harold. But I, I know that a lot of people have kind of moved to uh, more watching videos and various things like that. So I want to just kind of tell you about some of the things about Brother Harold. And uh, Brother Harold, I uh, was exposed to his tapes probably in the mid '90s, '95, '96, '97, somewhere around about that time. And uh, he was a very gifted preacher, uh, but I know this, good preaching is hard work, and uh, most preachers uh, feel like it's a great challenge, but Brother Harold had a unique gift uh, to be able to preach extremely well. At the same time, once I got to know him, uh, I met him in probably September or so of 2003, and that's really whenever things started kind of taking off with my friendship with him. And um, so it was during after that time, just a lot of books and things that he talked to me about. And um, and so I'll get into some of that here in the next uh, several videos or so. Uh, but that was whenever I met met Brother Harold. And um, again, just the, the influence that Brother Harold had, and it was primarily from a pulpit. It was purely... Uh, from a preaching aspect that he had the ability to preach the Word of God and uh, to be able to draw you into it. And uh, there were times where that uh, you would listen to him preach and there was such a stimulation of thoughts uh, that just the giftedness that he had uh, to send your mind in a direction that... Um, and maybe you probably would have not normally gone into. And uh, I will say that whenever I talked to him in December, 
there was a sermon that I had. In fact, I, I he didn't help me with it so much, but he just kind of uh, some of his preaching just sort of sparked a thought uh, in my mind, and and uh, he mentioned that sermon to me. Uh, I intend on preaching it next Sunday morning in our church. Uh, but I preached a sermon called Shoot Low Boys, They're Riding Shetland Ponies. And uh, I, uh, he said that to me in December. And, and I look back now and, and it's obvious that he may have been saying more to me at the time than what I really perceived. Uh, but one of the last few things that he said to me, he said, uh, Brother Harrelson, he said, I want you just to make sure that you keep telling those people to keep riding those Shetland ponies. And uh, we kind of got off the phone after that. And then when Johnette called me and uh, told me that he was not well, I, I, I've spent the last three or four, well, since Thursday, uh, and, to, and today is Monday, uh, just a lot of time thinking about his preaching, thinking about um, some of the impact that he had uh, in my life. I know that there's other men, and I intend on getting into one. There was one particular conversation uh, where he talked about some of the, the men that he they sort of worked with. And uh, so I'll tell you about some of that. You may or may not be interested, but I don't know. I know there may be a few preachers that may be curious as to some of the things that Brother Harold uh, spoke to and about. And uh, But again, I, I'm very... Uh, thankful and grateful to the Lord uh, that I was intersected into the life of Brother Harold. And uh, again, just he was a man of integrity. Uh, he was a man of honesty. And, and the influence that he had in preachers' lives was unbelievable, especially preachers uh, that found themselves in very discouraging situations. Uh, there was one minister uh, that I'm aware of that he lost a wife and a child. Uh, a tragic accident. Brother Harold called him every day. You think about that. He called him every day uh, and talked and made some kind of connection with him. Now, this was in the day before uh, we had smartphones and cell phones. So that means there was a physical telephone that he was picking up and he was calling uh, this this man, and then I know that there are other men that were were times where that they had a spouse. Uh, that passed away, and Brother Harold was on the phone regularly with those preachers. And then obviously the church there in Bridge City. Uh, you can't have uh, a preacher that has that ability without having a church that is sort of like a, um, if you want to use it, my, my mind again, a lot of medical directions, but there's something called a Petri dish. And uh, they grow things. You can grow antibiotics on uh, in petri dishes, various things like that. But uh, again, there, it's, the, it's the environment of that church. And I think that, that not only do I, I salute Brother Harold and Sister Harold. Sister Harold, uh, he there's more. Um, I'm bunches of times that he would mention uh, Sister Harold while he was talking to me on the phone. And uh, just again, the the where he was at there in Bridge City, I think that that church pulled things out of him as a preacher, and he was able to take the circumstances sometimes of their lives and preach and speak directly uh, into them so that they would be able to grasp principles and concepts uh, about what uh, where they were at in their life station. And I do believe that God uh, is certainly with us every step of the way. Um, uh, Psalm 37, 23, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Psalm 31, 15, my times are in his hands. And so I do believe that God is very unique in the fact uh, that he's with us on a regular basis. And Brother Harold, uh, I'm certain that the Lord used those circumstances to impress on him uh, some of the things about the way that he preached uh, to Bridge City. And so Brother Harold, uh, just again, and to his family, he's got a son. His name is Daryl. I've never met Daryl. Uh, but I, I did talk to him on the phone yesterday. Uh, my connection with Daryl, and I told him this yesterday, he created a, a, a program to track sermons. And uh, I can't tell you, I use that program. Uh, I think it finally 
uh, he didn't update it. <laughs> so maybe he needs to do that. Uh, but it quit working at about Windows 8 or 9, something like that. And uh, But I used that program, and that was the one that Sister Paula Thompson uh, used to keep track of all of Brother Harold's sermons there in Bridge City whenever she was working on uh, the tapes there. And uh, so again, I, I'm going to spend some time here in the next several days uh, talking to you about just the impact that, that John Harrell's ministry had uh, on me. There are a lot of other people uh, that could say some of the same things. And so uh, we'll spend some time talking about Brother Harold because I do believe there's certainly some honor uh, that needs to be given to him. So Lord bless. Thank you for stopping in. And uh, I'll see you the next time around.